A few days back, we done a story on PM Modi's 59 minutes loan mela. And uh, we did a story. We uh, the story was very well received. And we got a lot of response for that story. Interestingly, there was one response from a viewer who wrote back to us saying that listen, you know what I we did that approval I mean he went in for that scheme he he applied online he got his approval for some 85 lakh uh, 85 odd lakh rupees and uh, when he got the letter he took the letter and went to vijaya bank i guess he went to vijaya bank showed the letter to the to the bankers and they said listen theek hai letter letter theek hai lekin you know what uh, you'll have to give 85 lakhs ka collateral then we will give you loan he wrote back to us saying you know sir what is this if we have to give collateral then what all this what is all this online loan and online uh, 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 approval and all that this is this is this makes no sense we found that interesting we found that intriguing so we thought other than you know just uh, just taking his story as it is we thought why not investigate and when we investigated the story that's when we found out some major details about what this 59 minute loan is all about Namaskar welcome to HW exclusive with Akhilesh Bhargav and me Sujit Nair and for the next 10 to 15 minutes we will try and take you through what exactly is this 59 minutes loan mela and what exactly are the people who exactly are the people behind it and finally who is benefiting out of this 59 minutes loan mela the first thing is like we said an associate of ours we asked him to apply for this loan he applied for this loan and uh, he gave all the necessary numbers his gst numbers his his pan number and so on and so forth the loan was applied for and finally in 47 minutes not even 50 59 minutes the the gentleman got uh, approval from the 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 thing called psb loan uh, sin 59 minutes.com that was the, the website we the website name is written here now the thing is the approval that he got is something called as in principle approval you will be seeing it on the on the screen also we'll just try and zoom it to you it was called an in principle approval he got an approval of around 148000 rupees and he got an in principle approval of 148000 rupees he was supposed to collect that money from oriental bank of commerce and he was asked and the branch and all was given to him and the letter said it is an in principal approval so all this talk about apply and getting loan in 59 minutes we realized was nothing there it was something called as an in principal approval theek hai we went ahead as we went ahead completing the process he was asked after everything he was asked to pay an amount of 1180 rupees he was asked to pay an amount of 1180 rupees this too will come in as a, a zoom in right next to our uh, screen he was asked to pay 1180 rupees now when we actually probed we were hoping that we were paying this money to either oriental bank or some government organization or sidbi or somewhere when we went to pay this money we realized why we were not paying it to any government company we were paying it to a company called Capital World Platform Private Limited. It's a privately owned company from Ahmedabad. They are in Navarangpur in Ahmedabad. We were paying this one thousand one hundred and eighty rupees uh, rupees fee to a private company in Ahmedabad for a loan announced by the Prime Minister of India and the loan to be given by public sector banks. so prime minister of india announcing a loan that public sector bank will be given but the money that we gave the fee for this was collected by a private company called capital world platform private limited this raised eyebrows we started investigating further we went out to check who this company is and what this company is all about and what we realized is this company the person heading this company was a gentleman called jinat Vikas Bhai Shah he was the director of this company and he became a director of this company 30th March 2015 the second person who was running this company was Vikas Manilal Shah he became a director in 24th of August 2016 who is this person one doesn't know the only person who is a nominee director who became 
very recently on 4th of September 2018 he became a director was Akhil Handa now Akhil Handa according to our uh, information was a person who worked very closely with Modi during the election campaign 2014 he was working together with Prashant Kishore the then campaign manager of Modi so there was that was the only thing we could understand about one director his name Akhil Handa so that was it so this was the company run by few individuals Jinnat Shah, Vikas Shah and Akhil Handa and one or two more directors which we will come to and the company was formulated and given such a big job, such a big responsibility. Akhilesh, two questions. Question number one, what is a private company which has got nothing to do with IT technically as, as we see it, okay, which is not a big company handling such a large huge loan disbursement scheme of the government of India? You know, Sujit, the just as you were investigating, even we were trying to do our own bunch of unearthing of facts. While while the associate was trying to apply for the loan, he had to part with he had to part with his password and login ID of his GST income tax, and of course he had to part with his bank details. It is highly sensitive data. So my first, you have received, you know, you've raised a financial issue. Before that, I have an issue of integrity and trust. Am I supposed to share my login ID password with a very unknown private limited entity and let give them access to my very, very crucial business data? I think there's a big question mark here. So if this entire thing has been structured by the government of India, and we, the applicants, are being asked to part with our most sensitive data about our business, about our lives, to a private limited company which can misuse it, do what it wishes to do, then I have a major problem. And I think the problem starts here. That why did the government not us? They are now claiming that Sydney has become a 56% owner of the company. That's what they are claiming now. Then why did they even need to get this Capita World Platform Private Limited in the first place? Sydney has been already doing this kind of processing as part of its business activities. They have a site called www.udyamimitra.in. It does the same thing. So where was the need to have a new company coming in? The suspicion starts there, especially with names that you are giving in which are linked to the ruling party. And incidentally, when this company was chosen, a tender was issued. The scroll has come out with some remarkable facts. A tender was issued on 22nd January 2018. And the tender requirements were that they needed a company which had got extremely reliable track record in the matter of handling very sensitive data by way of analytics and algorithms on a very quick turnaround basis. If you look at the balance sheet of this particular company, Capita World Online, Capita World Platform, as of 31st March 2017, they had no software at all. It was supposed to be under development. I am, I mean, they have chosen this kind of a company to do complex analytics and algorithmic analysis of data. How did they really become eligible is a big question mark. So when you say that these were these politically linked appointees as promoters of the company, I do get an answer. Let me just continue on the background of the company. Why did Sidney not do this? Why did they need one private company to do this? Or why did they not choose the likes of a TCS or Infosys? The reason I'm taking those names are they have been already handling government websites of income tax, GST, etc. So their ability to hold confidentiality of data is at least known to us. We can trust them. I'm not going to trust one Capita Online Platform Private Limited which was formed when? 30th March 2015. This company was formed on 30th March 2015. Its income for financial year 2016 was zero. Its income for financial year 2017 was 15,680 rupees. Am I supposed to trust my data with a company with this kind of a questionable background? That means this company was purely built to handle this product. Oh yes, this company is an epitome of chronic capitalism. That this contract is going to come. So. Was this company eligible for this contract as per the tender conditions? It looks apparently no because one of the conditions was ability to handle algorithms and analytics of very key data. They don't have any such track record to talk about. The second was in the last three financial years, they should have had management consulting income of at least 50 crores a year. 
Their income in 2017 was 15,680 and 2016 was zero. They don't meet that criteria. And now the country's major financial lending scheme, I'm sure it will go into lakhs of crores. If a mudra loan can, you know, go up to about 7 lakh crores is, is, is the figure we are told, loans given out, this MSME scheme will also go to that kind of a level. Are we trying to trust a company with that kind of a data at a time, at a time when the Reserve Bank has made it mandatory for all foreign companies, financial institutions, Visa, MasterCard, etc. to locate their data about India in India. If they are being asked to do that, my data is going to be with them. A company which had no business, no track record, no experience, no software to handle my kind of data. I have my first problem is there. My second problem is crony capitalism. Here is a company which was completely ineligible and they have been given this kind of a lucrative assignment. You know why it is lucrative, Sujit? That thousand rupees you mentioned. Thousand one hundred and eighty rupees to be precise. The thousand one hundred eighty that we are mentioning is per applicant. I am told. My sources tell me that about, about 1 crore applications have been received so far. So you are talking 1 crore into 1000 is a 1000 crores. That is application fees for a company which had no track record, no software, no, no integrity that I would want to trust and an income of only 15,680 rupees in financial year 17. This year is going to be a billionaire bonanza for them. So. If the application that finally come, let's say our 1 crore 50 lakhs, you're talking about a gross income for just application of 1500 crores. That's the first part. Correct. The second is, they get 0.35% of whatever loan is sanctioned. So if the loan sanction is 1 lakh crores, they get 350 crores. Straight Pro as profit. Pro processing fees. I think this is, uh, you know, uh, election booties being doled out to cronies. Absolutely. My second problem is there. My third issue, Sujit, is I don't know how true this will finally turn out to be. Even if loans are not sanctioned, let's say for a moment, Capita World Platform has earned an income by way of application fees. Correct. Okay, that's a sizable amount. Correct. After that, if the loan is not sanctioned, you have no recourse because the letter that you showed is called an in-principle letter. Correct. An in-principle letter has got no banking sanctity. An in-principle letter doesn't mean that the bank will give you the loan. First thing, an in-principle letter is always followed by what is called a sanction letter. Even a sanction letter doesn't mean you are going to get the loan. Only when the money is disbursed to you. And it is when the money is disbursed to you that you come to know whether there were any conditions put in fine letters. So when our viewer says that he went and he was said, please put in a collateral security, that was a fine letter which was a rude shock to him. Which was if I had to put a security, I mean, what are you doing? There's no favor you're doing for me. So between an in-principle letter to a sanction, to a disbursement is a huge uncertainty. It need not take place. But Capita would have already earned that the application fees that we are talking about. Akhilesh, I want to stick to this application for a minute. When you're talking about an application fee, in any under all circumstances, there is never an application fee actually paid for a for an app, for, for an application for an in principle approval which has absolutely no sanctity like you rightly said you are making somebody pay an application fee for an in principle sanctity does any other bank take this money sujit even if they take let's say if, right you know first of all i don't know of a bank which takes an application fee they take a processing fee they take a processing fee yes. that is provisional your loans are sanctioned sanctioned and that processing fees is taken when the disbursement is happening correct so they do take correct processing fee correct but an application fees one has not really heard of. Without any sanction on the loan, number one question. Akhilesh, number two question which I wanted to ask you, and I, I know you wanted to say something, but I just wanted to inter interrupt here, is the second question is, which means that who does this application fee go to? Does it go to any... Capita uh, platform, basically. The, the entire lock, stock and barrel. Not yes. that they share it with anybody. It is else. now that they are saying that Sidby has is a 56% owner, but let me also tell you the background of that. The share capital of this company, Capita, as of 31st March 2016 was 1 lakh rupees. Hmm. It had incurred a loss such that its net worth was just 60,000 rupees. It was a loss making company. In 2017, again, they incurred a loss of 2.5 lakh rupees. So they were not a company that would be entitled to a premium. Sidby has taken a stake in this company by paying a premium on a 10 rupee share. They have paid a premium of 119 rupees. 
So a loss making company, a loss making company on the basis of its projected future earnings, which is guaranteed on the basis of its projected future earnings gets capital from SIDB of 22.5 crores, wherein the promoters had put in only 1 lakh rupees. Uh, so I'll give you business. I'll also give you capital to do your business. And that is how uh, for a for a for a for a business you don't even understand properly. For a business you don't understand because the, if you go to the you know the main objects of this company Capita World Platform, I must read it out. Its activity is said to be legal, accounting, bookkeeping, and auditing activities, tax consultancy, market research, and public opinion polling, business and management consultancy. Nowhere is software analytics and algorithms appearing. So it was never eligible. But in crony capitalism, I'll give you the business. Oh, you don't have the capital. I'll give you the capital also. Oh, you may be questioned. I'll make you know at a fancy premium, make one of the state-owned companies to be a partner. So you look to be okay. So even before they started the business, the company had already got 22.5 crores from Sidbi by way of capital. <laughs> it can't be better than this. It definitely can't be better than this. Actually. And if this and if this continues, as I see, this is election goodies being doled out. Mudra to me was an election goodie. Your uh, Kisan credit card was an election goodie. You you got massive NPS built up there. The big ones they took NPS of thousands lakhs of crores. They have got their goodies. Now this is a small sector. I think these are election goodies. So for Capita World platform, apart from the application fees that they are going to get by hundreds of crores, processing fee also will come. Which will which will be yes. a huge amount. Yes. So you are actually confident that uh, loans will be doled out. I think so. I, I, at least, if I see the timing, the way it is going about it, to me, this looks like a loan mela. And finally, if the loans are not paid, who is responsible? Oh, who takes the hit? Interestingly, yeah. You know what you didn't see in this in principle letter? Hmm. It mentioned that the loan will be guaranteed by CGT SME. Yes. Now, CGT SME is a subsidiary of SIDB, hmm. which guarantees loans taken by small entrepreneurs. So, if the entrepreneur defaults, CGT SME pays it. So, it means. Finally, it be an NPA borne by the government if it is not paid to answer your question. So, Akhilesh, one doesn't know whether the MSMEs in India is going to benefit or not benefit, but one is very sure that Form Capita private World limited. Platform Private Limited will have a huge turnover to record by the end of December 31st. So, he no longer is going to remain MSME. MSME. <laughs> he is going to be a, a giant company. So that's all from Akhilesh and me. Till we see you next time. Namaskar. If you like this video, please share it and we would love to hear your comments in the comments section down here. Also, please do like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter to get minute-to-minute -minute news updates. For more such shows and videos, well, subscribe to our YouTube channel.